Hey everybody, Joey here. In today's video, I'm going to be making El Ruderai yogurt without half and half. Normally, I buy some store bought, prepackaged, bottled half and half milk, but I've been getting a lot of questions and a lot of feedback that a lot of people don't have access to prepackaged half and half. So I thought I would show a technique to make it without half and half, mixing together whole milk and heavy cream. Now what I got shown on the screen is the equipment I'll be using. This time around I'm going to be using four pint sized jars and a milk frother to sterilize the inulin. Here are the ingredients I'll be using. I've got some Anthony's organic inulin powder, some A2 whole milk, and some heavy cream from my local grocery store. Now I want to point out the fat content of this mixture I'm about to make is going to be double the fat content that I'm normally used to making. If you do the math, the store bought half and half I normally get, it's about three and a half grams of fat per 30 milliliters. This mixture that I'm about to make is around five to six grams of fat per 30 milliliters. In my previous videos, I was recommending you use Steramine to sanitize your equipment. Today I'm going to be showing if you don't have access to Steramine, you can boil your jars in water to sterilize them. I believe it's better to boil the jars in water than to use Steramine because the boiling water will ensure that you kill off all the surface bacteria that exists. Now I'm going to be sterilizing my inulin using a milk frother that I have. This milk frother will heat the milk up to around 160 degrees Fahrenheit. And even though this isn't up to the recommended 180 degrees Fahrenheit that a lot of people recommend, I believe it is sufficient enough to kill off most bacteria. So shown on the screen, I'm adding around 20 grams of inulin to this milk frother pot. Then I'm going to go ahead and add in this entire carton of heavy cream, which is around 500 milliliters or half of our batch size. Next I'm going to set my milk frother and let it do its thing, heating up the mixture to 160 degrees Fahrenheit. If you want a more detailed explanation of this, please check out my other videos. I'm going to be doing some temperature experimentation with this batch. I bought a Bluetooth thermometer that I'm going to put in one of my jars to monitor the temperature of my yogurt maker while it's fermenting. Here I'm showing what the probe actually looks like. It fits right inside the pint sized jar and I'm going to go ahead and just toss it in my boiling water to get it sterilized. So it's saying that the temperature probe inside of the boiling water is 200 degrees Fahrenheit. And we all know that water is actually 212 degrees, so it's not really giving me an accurate reading inside of this environment. I also have a laser thermometer that I'm using here that's also kind of giving a false reading. It is showing around 200 degrees. When I probe the side of the pot, however, it does show around 214 degrees, which seems to be a lot accurate. Next I'll be removing the hot jars from the boiling water and staging them to get set up for mixing. As you can see I'm using gloves and you need to take caution when doing this as the jars are very hot and can burn you. They do however cool down fairly quickly. I'm also placing the Bluetooth probe inside one of the jars. So now I'm going to fill up each one of my jars with around 120 milliliters of my heavy cream inulin mixture. At this point the jars have cooled down enough to where I can just kind of move them in and off the scale really quick. And um, I'm just filling it up with the probe already inside. This is my temperature probe that I'll show in a little bit. And here I want to show you that very little inulin has stuck inside of this pot. This is probably a little bit more than normal than what I'm used to. Maybe it has something to do with the heavy cream. I'm not really sure. Then I'm going to add the same amount, the same 120 milliliters of the whole A2 milk to create my half and half mixture.
Next, I'm going to add a spoonful of El Ruderai yogurt that I made from a previous batch into each jar. All right, so here I want to show what the temperature probe is saying. Right now it's saying that the probe inside the jar filled up with milk is 93 degrees Fahrenheit. Remember, I took whole milk straight out of the fridge that's roughly 50 degrees Fahrenheit, and I combined it with my heavy cream mixture that I warmed up to 160 degrees Fahrenheit. Now I'm going to put these jar lids on and I've elected to put the lid seal side up and I'm just doing this to make it easier to unscrew in the future. And here I want to show that I'm not really putting these lids on too tight. I'm just kind of barely getting them finger tight. I'm kind of shaking them a little bit so you can see that they're not really screwed on all the way. And another important thing to note that I've touched on before in a previous video that I'm making sure that I'm filling my reservoir up as high as it can go with water. I believe that you'll get a more stable temperature if the reservoir tank is filled up as high as it'll go. And for the purposes of demoing this temperature probe I'm going to set my yogurt maker to 102 degrees Fahrenheit and I'm going to come back in an hour or so and we're going to check to see what the probe is saying right now the current temperature is saying it's 91 degrees Fahrenheit and just making note of the time it's 2:40 p.m. so here it is it's roughly 15 minutes later and you can see the temperature has gone up. There's the time, it's roughly 15 minutes later. The temperature has shot up to 100 degrees. And take note of the yogurt maker is set to 102 degrees. So now the question becomes, which is accurate? Is the temperature probe off by a couple of degrees? Is the yogurt maker off by a couple of degrees? It's hard to say, but unless you take these measurements and collect this data, you'll never come to your, your own conclusion. And here it is again, roughly 35 uh, minutes later. The temperature, I believe, is getting more stable inside the yogurt maker, and it has shot up to 102 degrees, and that is exactly where I have this yogurt maker set to. And here it is again, a couple hours later, the temperature has gone down two degrees. Now it's saying it's 100 degrees inside of the yogurt maker. It's actually what we're measuring is the probe that's inside of the jar. I'm just taking note of the time here. So what this is leading me to believe is this yogurt maker is set pretty good. It's only off by a couple of degrees up or down and really I think that whatever temperature I have it set to it is going to ferment two degrees lower according to my probe now I am taking into consideration the accuracy of this probe is it really within plus or minus two degrees of what it is saying that's the ultimate question moving forward with this setup instead of setting this yogurt maker to ferment at 98 degrees I'm going to be setting it at a hundred degrees because I believe that it's actually fermenting a tad bit lower than what it's saying. So here is the finished product. This has fermented for 36 hours and what has happened is there's so much fat inside of this that ha has risen to the top and created a little yellow fat layer. And I do not believe this is contaminated in any way. I just believe that there's so much fat inside this it's double the amount of fat that I'm used to using that it just has collected at the top and what I'm going to show here is I'm going to stir this up 
and I'm going to show the consistency of this stirred up and it's actually rather thin which I'm pretty surprised about how thin and runny this actually is. See as you can see it just kind of falls off the spoon and this is not what I'm used to seeing. I'm used to seeing a nice big clump of yogurt that sticks to the spoon. So I decided to alter the recipe slightly. I decided to try to get the mixture to match the fat content of the store-bought half and half that I normally get. And it turned out pretty good. I think the consistency overall, I am kind of shocked to say this, I think the consistency of doing the mixture by hand is better than the stuff that I get at the store. So here it is. I'm going to get a nice big spoonful here. This is kind of what I do in the mornings as I weigh out a little four ounce container and I eat this first thing when I get to work. But the consistency of this is just outstanding in my opinion. This is some of the best stuff that I've made yet. And I'm kind of on the fence about whether or not I should do the mixture by hand or keep going with the prepackaged store bought stuff. I'll leave the recipes in the video description for both the runny batch and the good batch in case you want to know the details behind them. The household supervisor has decided to pay me a visit this morning, checking in on my work. You get off of there, get, get, get off of there, get. Thanks for watching everybody, see you in the next one.